internal validity is threatened if there is a plausible alternative explanation for a study's results. In order to judge the internal validity of a particular study, you have to be familiar with the type of threats that can occur. I'll start with three types of threats that are in some way associated with the participants or the subjects used in the study. These threats are called maturation, selection, and selection by maturation. Let's start with maturation. Maturation refers to an alternative explanation formed by natural change. Suppose I hypothesize that loneliness causes depression. I decrease loneliness in elderly people who are prone to depression by giving them a cat to take care of. I expect their depression to go down because they are now less lonely. I find a retirement home willing to participate, and I measure depression in a group of residents who seem unhappy. I give them a cat to take care of for four months, and then I measure depression again. Let's assume depression is lowered after taking care of the cat. Does this mean that the cat's companionship caused the decrease in depression? Well, not necessarily. The decrease in depression could have occurred naturally. People develop, they change. Many physical and mental problems simply disappear after a while. Even if we don't receive treatment, depressions often go away by themselves. Fortunately, there is a way to eliminate this alternative explanation of natural change that we refer to as maturation. We can introduce a control group that is measured at the same time, but is not exposed to the hypothesized cause. Both groups should mature or change to the same degree. Any difference between the groups can now be attributed to the hypothesized cause, and not natural change. The threat of maturation is eliminated, but unfortunately, a study that includes a control group is still vulnerable to other threats to internal validity. This brings us to the threat of selection. Selection refers to any systematic difference in subject characteristics between groups other than the manipulated cause. Suppose in my study I included a control group that didn't take care of a cat. What if assignment of elderly participants to the groups was based on mobility? Suppose people who weren't able to bend over and clean the litter box were put in the control group. Now suppose the experimental group was in fact less depressed than the control group. This might be caused not by the company of the cat, but because the people in the experimental group were just more physically fit. A solution to this threat is to use a method of assignment to groups that ensures that a systematic difference on, on subject characteristics is highly unlikely. This method is called randomization. I'll discuss it in much more detail when we cover research designs. The last threat to internal validity related to participants is the combined threat of maturation and selection. We call this a selection by maturation threat. This happens when groups systematically differ in their rate of maturation. For example, suppose the effectiveness of the cat treatment was examined in an experimental group consisting of volunteers who are open to new things. In contrast, the control group consisted of more conservative people who don't like change. Participants were selected so that both groups had a similar level of depression at the start of the study. But what if we find that the experimental group shows lower depression? Well, perhaps the lower rate of depression in the experimental cat therapy group is simply due to the fact that open-minded people tend to naturally get over their depressive feelings more quickly than conservative people do. Just like selection on its own, the threat of selection by maturation can be eliminated by randomized assignment to groups. So you see that the research design we choose, for example adding a control group, and the methods we use, for example random assignment, can help to minimize threats to internal validity.